Hello there, and welcome to my talk about building Web3's video infrastructure layer, why openness and decentralization matter. Coming up in this talk will be a little introduction about who I am, who LifePair is, the company that I represent, what, why we do what we do and how we do it, explain some of the components involved in LifePair and how you can get involved. Now, before I get started, a little disclaimer, usually I make my own slides in LaTeX, but since I had some help from the marketing department and well, good luck teaching the, the marketing department how to work with LaTeX, it doesn't look as polished as my usual slides do. Normally this is where I would wait for laughter, but you know, it's a pre-recorded talk, so what can you do? Let's get into it, shall we? So first about me, I'm the project lead for Miss Server. That's the main project I, I, I work on. I'm also VP of engineering at LifePeer. You might also know me as that one guy that fixed the RTMP reconnect bug in OBS last year. Uh, you could also know me from my website acpatterns.com, uh, a small website that was a pattern tool for the Nintendo game Animal Crossing. You can also know me as a core team member for Bumblebee, I helped doing the rewrite in C. Uh, you can also know me from the FOSTEM team in 2016, where I helped do the video stuff for them back then. So that's who I am. Bringing us to LifePeer. So who is LifePeer? Well, LifePeer is a company and a protocol on the blockchain that have a mission to create the world's open video infrastructure. Now, part of this, this mission is several things that I will be discussing here today. One of them is the LifePeer protocol, which is a blockchain thing, a blockchain thing which involves the LifePeer token, the token used in this protocol. It also involves LifePeer Incorporated, the company that I work for and represent here today. And it also involves several software projects that people from this company work on and contribute to. So why do we need the open video infrastructure? Well, today the creator economy is pretty much a walled garden, which I drew very prettily here. This is supposed to represent grass and you know a, a wall around it. You see all these platforms and hosting services and such, and they're all very centralized, very old fashioned, very uh, non-democratic, let's call them that. And quite a few people want to get away from the power of these big companies. Well, LifePair was basically brought into existence to help stop these companies from having too much power and to help decentralize it. And with decentralized, we don't just mean putting everything on blockchain, we actually mean spreading the, the network around and making things not in one location and giving more power to little people that are trying to stand up against these big companies and forming new services that are exciting and giving them a way to compete with these big projects and big products and big companies in a way that they still can. So part of the projects that make this possible are the protocol and node software. The node software is what you would run to help the protocol run. It's also the Miss Server project that I work on and various adjacent software packages. So why is LifePeer doing things with open source and Web3? Well, there's a lot of overlap between the core values of the open source community and the Web3 blockchain decentralization community. Uh, of course, open source in Web3 is also a big motivator to help contribute, which is something that is needed for the ecosystem to grow. Now, I myself have more of a background in open source and in traditional video technology. So this whole blockchain thing is not really my thing, but I can definitely see the potential here. And of course, the company LifePeer is very heavily invested in it. So I will try in this talk to kind of bring these two subjects together in a nice way that hopefully doesn't offend fans of either of the two. We'll see how that goes. So these shared values include security, transparency, composability, contribution, and consensus. And I could go further into what all of these mean, but I think if you're here and you're listening to this talk, I don't really need to go any further into all of this. So why don't we skip over that? So open source of life pair in the past, today and the future have changed and are changing as things always do. In the past, uh, all codes and repositories were always public already. Uh, there was some archonic contribution, but not very much. Occasional bounties were written out, there were some grants to support open source ecosystem projects, but it was a little bit of a, a hodgepodge of how things worked around. Well, today we're doing things slightly better. Confluence is a big update to the LifePeer protocol, which I will get into later, but it's a big update, which is getting a security audit as well as a bug bounty. And we are creating clear pathways to contribute to these projects and help build better systems together. 
in the future we want to write better contribution uh, uh, guidelines as well as provide a more robust grants program so that you can uh, get rewarded for helping the ecosystem grow both blockchain related and non-blockchain related. I think it's really cool that a company that is mostly invested in blockchain is actually willing to help fund non-blockchain projects that do related things as well. So what are these projects? Let's get into them. First, there's the LifePeer protocol and Node software. So the LifePeer protocol is the thing that does stuff with blockchain. And it works more or less like this. There are three types of nodes involved. There's the orchestrator node, there is a broadcaster node, and there is a transcoding node. On, over here, you only see orchestrator and transcoding, but the broadcaster is also involved. That's uh, represented as the application here. So how it works is that the broadcaster, or the application in this diagram, it has something that it needs to get transcoded, for example. And LifePeer is mostly about video transcoding, just in case, you know, I hadn't mentioned that. If there's something they want to get transcoded, they can uh, put this request for transcoding to the orchestrator, who then does the transcode work, uploads the transcoded video, everything is verified, and the orchestrator gets paid for the work they did. The orchestrator is more of a gateway to the transcoding node, which is not displayed here because the transcode node does actually nothing on chain. So how this works is the broadcaster, so the application in the previous one, it uses a discovery protocol to grab a global registry of orchestrators from the blockchain. So people register themselves there, which requires a little bit of funds so that you can get put on there as a sign of that you're being serious, more or less. And then they get a list of available nodes, they can contact them, reach out to them, get the transcoding work done as it per the previous slide. And if one of any of them lose the connection displayed here by the red cross, they can move over to a different orchestrator without dropping the actual stream. That way you get decentralization and that way you get um, robustness against downtime in the network and stuff like that. Now this is kind of a really cool thing because this transcoding happens on, uh, at least today, on uh, decoding and encoding chips on Nvidia cards at least specifically for LifePeer. We're actually working on getting integration with more hardware accelerated transcoders than just NVIDIA cards, but stick with me for now. So the cool thing is that there's a lot of video cards being used for crypto mining. And crypto mining uses the CUDA cores, but the CUDA cores are not as interesting for transcoding. I mean, they can do transcoding work, but transcoding work is not really where they shine. The encoding and decoding chips, however, are basically you're sitting there doing nothing if you're doing crypto mining. And what you could do is take the encoding and decoding chips and use these to do transcoding work while you're also doing crypto mining work. That way, utilizing all of the hardware instead of just a little bit and helping not contribute to, you know, ruining the environment as much because you're not really wasting power, you're using it for something useful and also using it for other things at the same time. So kind of like doing two tasks with one bit of power, which is kind of cool. In a way, we're actually making crypto greener, which is nice. So what does this enable you to do? Well, expensive uh, providers like established old fashioned providers, they will charge quite a bit per, per hour of video transcoded. I have, by the way, no idea how up to date these numbers are. These are from the marketing department. Don't, don't look at me. Doing this in cloud infrastructure gets it quite a bit cheaper, but doing it with LifePeer's video servers is like an order of magnitude cheaper still. And that's really cool, especially because there's no centralization here. You can use the LifePeer video service uh, by using, you know, LifePeer Incorporated's gateway to it. But you can also directly connect to the blockchain system and connect to these systems and do it all yourself without any third party in between. So there really is a free market for transcoding here. If you want to know more about the LifePeer protocol, the LifePeer node, the software that runs all this, or LifePeer tokens, LPTs, you can check out lifepeer.org for more on all this crypto related stuff. You can also check out lifepeer.com if you want an easy way to use the network without needing to bother with all the crypto stuff. So those give you the two websites you need to look at depending on who you are and what you're interested in. Um, LifePeer has been seeing quite a bit of use for transcoding. These are some graphs from, uh, looks like a couple weeks ago. And as you can see, the network has grown a lot, especially since mid last year. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to seeing even more growth in the future because more network growth means that the network gets even more efficient and you can get 
cheaper prices per minute and stuff like that, which is really cool. Moving on to the project I actually know things about. Well, of course I know a little bit about everything, but this is my main project, so, you know, Mist Server. So Mist Server is a streaming media toolkit, and it has a focus on protocol and format compatibility, especially with ease of integration for all these things. It's made by developers like me, for developers like you, and we really focus on making it easy to develop media-based projects and stuff like that without needing to get into the nitty-gritty of the protocol and format stuff and basically only focus on doing easy integrations that use existing technology, you know, JSON-based webhooks, stuff like that. The project's been active since 2007, so that feels like it hasn't been that long, but, you know, it's been that long. It's maintained by DDV Tech BV, which is a company based in the Netherlands. And I think we were established in 2009, something like that, a little bit after project started. And since October 2021, last year, uh, LifePair has a 100% controlling interest in DDV Tech BV and um, basically uh, took over the funding of the company. And we are starting to get more and more integrated and more and more working together, which is really cool. But we keep a focus on media and we try to keep most of the blockchain stuff out of MIST server and put that in like related modules so that you can keep everything separate and use only what you need and not what you don't need. This has been the focus from MIST server from the beginning. You never are forced to use parts of it that you don't want to use. It's like a, a modular thing where you take what you want and that's it. You can check out mistserver.org for documentation, downloads, more stuff like that. And you know, since this is my project, who really needs more than one slide, right? I mean, eh. I can do it all in one slide. So what is this other software that is related? Well, there are some more official things also made by the LifePair team, like a command line interface transcoding tool, um, which uses the LifePair network to do the transcoding relatively cheaply. There's a web-based streaming tool that lets you stream from to a streaming server from your browser. There's some metric collecting tools, etc., etc., And there's quite a few fan projects that we are very happy that exist and are happy to support as well. So what are contribution opportunities for other developers looking to get into this whole ecosystem and the software and everything? Well, of course you can do organic contributions, find something you like, fix it, you don't like, you know, fix it, find a bug, fix it, stuff like that. There are also some bounties that you can look into, which give you compensation for known projects or known issues that we want solving. And there's the grants project where you can apply for a grant if you have your own project that you feel is related to the field and would help everyone involved, well, then you can apply for such a grant and hopefully get paid for doing something semi-related that doesn't necessarily is directly related to, to life here. So this can be video stuff, it can be blockchain stuff, whatever works, right? So more about that grants project, it's a uh, program, sorry. It's about adjacent software, so applications or tooling, things that help people interact with the LifePair network or related tools like MIS server, things that improve the experience but don't have to be part of the core code. So it gives you a way to contribute without actually needing to contribute to the actual projects that we host and maintain. You can host your own project, maintain your own project. It just interacts with ours and we're also happy to support that, which is kind of cool, at least I think so. But you know, I work there, so what do I know? So uh, if you want to co contribute to LifePeer in, gen in general, you can go to the GitHub page, github.com slash LifePeer, and uh, in particular the go-LifePeer is the main project, at least for the blockchain related stuff. You can also get a whole bunch of uh, contribution guides. I'm sure someone will post this in the chat for those watching this live. If not, um, probably go to LifePeer.org and click the links to the documentation because I don't expect you to type those whole letters in, but you certainly could. Um, they also wanted me to uh, ask you to join the LifePeer Discord. I'm not even going to try putting a Discord link in this talk. It's going to be a mess. There will be a link on LifePeer.org and LifePeer.com to get you to our Discord. Just follow those. Much easier. Of course, we also would like you to contribute to MISSERV and other related projects. Um, there are no clear guidelines for contributions yet, but definitely get in touch with us. Hit us up on the chat, stuff like that. We are always happy to see people participate, get interested. Uh, build things on Miss Server, with Miss Server, or inside Miss Server. I'm always happy with that. Or other, you know, like your projects. But, you know, that's my project. So, uh, so we have a really cool announcement for Miss Server. We're getting e even open source server. Rar, rar, rar. So, to show how much we love the open source community, we're planning to release all of Miss Server, including the previously closed source components, under a much more free license around Valentine's Day this year. So, yes, that is in a little bit over a week. 
Um, I should say that this date might change. We'll try to make things release on that day. Uh, but you know how it goes with, with projects and code and software. Sometimes releases need a little bit of time. So see that disclaimer at the bottom there. Uh, Lifepair is also hiring and um, we also post jobs for working on MISERVER and other Lifepair related projects on the same job page. Definitely take a look if you're interested. Uh, I think we'll probably be hiring for quite a while. So even if you're watching this later on as a video or recording, def check it out. It should be cool. Uh, that's the last slide I have. Um, while I'm, you know, shilling and selling things, um, make sure to check out, uh, a rela if, if you're liking this chat system that you're seeing next to the talk, make sure you check out the talk by a friend of mine, uh, Nicholas, who is doing a talk in the Matrix room tomorrow. I think he's the only Nicholas, so you search for his name. Um, and you know, that was my talk. I hope you enjoyed it, and I should be in the chat, as well as a couple of my colleagues to help answer your questions. We're happy to talk anytime, but especially now. Uh, let us know what you think, let us know what you want, let us know what you hate. We're here. All right. Bye-bye.